Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Justine and this is my sewing journal. In today's episode, I'm going to take you with me fabric shopping in central London. And at the end of this video, I'll be sharing my fabric haul. Before I show you the fabric stores, let me talk about this top that I am wearing. The pattern is called Debra and it is from one of my favorite pattern designers, Vicky Sews. It is a semi-fitted blouse with an accentuated waist. The front has princess seams and the back has waist darts and an invisible zip. To go with this pattern, I use this black and white viscose fabric from a brand called Lady McElroy. I really like how the faces are drawn on this fabric. It reminds me of Modigliani paintings. I've used the jersey version of this fabric in my previous video and I'll add the link below so you can see how it looks like. Here are the adjustments I made on this pattern. I shortened the sleeves, the original length made my arms look shorter. I also shortened the body since I have a short torso. I shouldn't have added extra centimeters to the width of the body. I wanted a more comfortable fit rather than a tight fitting blouse. But after making it, I realized I should have left it as it was. Well, at least I did not mess up the statement sleeves. This is what I like about Vicky Sews. They have interesting details like these statement sleeves and wardrobe staples. Another thing I like about this brand is the clear and thorough instructions. The colored pictures next to the instructions are really helpful. Although the fit could be better, I am quite happy with this make. This pattern has taught me what princess seams are, that pressing and basting as you make the garment makes for a better finished garment. If I were to make this top again, which I will, I would use a plain fabric, maybe a medium weight linen. I will also leave the body measurements as they are and hopefully get a better fitting blouse. I bought other patterns from this brand because of my experience in making this Deborah top. Now let's get back to fabric shopping. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in London and I thought I'll take the opportunity to visit fabric stores. On the top of my list was Liberties. When I go to Liberties, I usually don't have any intentions of buying fabrics. I just want to have a browse and get inspired. But lucky for me, the day I went, they had a sale going on, so I did score some really good fabrics. I made a separate video on that, so please watch it. Apart from going to Liberties, I managed to go to four other shops that are just five, if not ten minutes outside Liberties store. I was also pleasantly surprised that my friend's flat where I was staying is only a 10 minute walk to one of the shops that I usually buy from online. So yeah, she's not allowed to move anymore. Right, let's get to it. Let's have a walk around central London and visit these fabric shops. The first shop is a 10 minute walk from Liberty. It's called Barvik Fabrics. On their website, it says, Borovic Fabrics is the oldest fabric shop in Soho. This was established in 1932. For that reason, I thought I definitely need to come here and see their fabric selection. And I wasn't disappointed. They have a wide selection of special occasion fabrics like jacquard, chainmail, embroidered tulle, organza, etc. If you're planning a project for a special occasion, this is the place to be. I would recommend coming in store to look at the fabrics rather than shop on their website. I think that is the key. You need a plan when you visit a store like this. They have such a good selection that it can be overwhelming. I don't have a sewing project that calls for these types of fabrics, so I did not stay too long in the shop. Just two minutes from here is another shop that also sells high quality fabrics. Misen fabrics, stocks, fine silks, French lace, jacquards, brocades, velvets, and tweeds. Sorry about the flickering lights. I did not realize that the white lights can make the video flicker. As you can see, the fabrics here are displayed by color. 
everything is tidy, so the shop is easy to navigate. Again, I don't have a particular project in mind, but I did have a good look around just in case I come across a fabric I can get for a future project. I was quite drawn to these brightly colored fabrics. Here is me having a closer look and of course touching the fabrics. The stock is spread over two floors and downstairs is equally tidy. There's plenty of tailoring materials here as well as leather. There is another Misan shop in London, but I think this is the main one. The other one is in Goldhawk Road. I know there are a lot of other fabric shops there too, so that's another place to visit next time I'm in London. Further down Berwick Street is Fan New Trimmings. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but once inside, you'll soon realize that this is Aladdin's cave. Where was this shop when I was looking for a feather trimming supplier? In case you haven't seen my intro video, I make and sell ostrich feather bags on Etsy. For some reason, I've never come across this shop before when I've been looking for a supplier. Well, now I definitely know. At the moment, their website is still under construction, but I think they can take orders over the phone. So yay, another good supplier to add to my books. The short way to describe this shop is that it has everything you need and more. I lost track of the time while browsing. If I hadn't been hungry, I would have spent more time there. I picked up a couple of things I don't need, but I cannot leave without. I have not looked at the price tags of all the items, but I think the prices are similar to other haberdashery shops. The prices displayed clearly states plus VAT, so you have to do a little math. This is the smallest of the three shops along Berwick Street that I wanted to see, but I stayed here the longest. Eventually, I had my fill of looking at ribbons, buttons, patches, beads, lace, and feather trimmings. So the next shop on the list is on the next street. If you are the owner of that shop in Poland Street, I apologize, as I will now mispronounce the name of the shop. This lovely shop is Macalo and Wallace. Moving swiftly on, how cute is that cardboard sheep? On the ground floor, they have plenty of knitting and crochet materials, as well as fabrics. Apart from what they sell, I also like their furniture, like this wooden table. I could use a big cutting table like that. They did not have as much fabrics as Misan. They seem to have more on their website. Downstairs, it's wall-to-wall -wall haberdashery and trimmings. They have a good online shop, so I did not feel the need to buy anything right then and there. Although, I did pick up a couple of things. Although you can't see it in the video, the shop was very busy. I avoided filming other people because, you know, privacy. When I was researching these shops, their common thread, pardon the pun, is that they cater to fashion students, the West End Theatre, film studios, and fashion brands. These shops are on the pricier side, but if you're looking for a collection of high-quality and curated fabrics and trims, these are the shops to explore. As I said, I'd research these shops, so I had an idea of what they'd be like. But of course, it is a different experience when you're actually in the shop. If you're coming here for the first time, Allow yourself a couple of hours. You don't want to rush around and feel like you've missed something. I think this was around 3 p.m. and I'm definitely ready for lunch now. My eyes were very full but my tummy needed filling. So I had lunch and then headed to the tube station. So now we're off to Kilburn High Street. From Oxford Circus Station, I took the Bakerloo Line and then got off at Kilburn Park. We are now on our way to Rainbow Fabrics. From Kilburn Station, it is only a five minute walk to the shop. This is the shop I was referring to at the beginning of this vlog. 
when I started sewing clothes during the pandemic, I searched online where I could buy cheap fabrics. This shop came up. I was happy with the quality and design of their fabrics, so I keep coming back. I did not realize that their brick and mortar shop is actually just a 15 minute walk from my friend's flat. That's why I plan to go shopping in Seoul first and then come here before heading back to my friend's flat where I was staying. What I like about this shop is that they offer a wide range of dead stock fabrics. Leftover fabric or dead stock is often claimed as a sustainable alternative to virgin materials in the fashion industry. It might not be the quick fix to the bigger waste problem, but I guess every little helps. I forgot to ask while I was there if they had another warehouse unit. For some reason, I just imagined the place to be bigger. Well, there's plenty here anyway. This discount rail outside had plenty of cotton fabrics that are perfect for summer dresses. Of course, I helped myself to some of the fabrics while I was here. My suitcase was definitely heavier when I went back to Newcastle. Now it's time to unpack the suitcase. Let's start with the less exciting but essential sewing tools. I bought this good quality tape measure from MNW. It's from a German brand that I can't pronounce either. I also bought this sewing machine oil as I expect to do a lot of sewing this year. What we have next are these patches I bought from Fan New Trimmings. I think I'll use them for a sweatshirt, if not a jacket project. Although I'm intimidated by the thought of making a jacket. I haven't sewn outdoor clothing before, but I really want to use these patches, especially this tiger patch. I love how the eyes are red crystals. I can't imagine a red jacket with this patch. The next three items are all from Rainbow Fabrics. I didn't get any of the stunning fabrics from those shops in Soho. I'm just afraid of wasting expensive materials while I'm still improving my skills. So the first fabric is this floral jersey knit. This was only two pounds for about a meter. Yes, I know, two pounds. It was in the bargain section. It's really soft, so I'm thinking loungewear. I'm pairing it with this new look 6518. The pattern is for woven fabrics, but I think it should work. I guess we'll both find out. Next one is this blue and white cotton. I'm going to pair it with a Simplicity 9742 dress pattern. I think the graphic style of this fabric would update the more traditional style of this dress. I'm going to be brave and try to do the million buttonholes on this dress. I can afford to mess up because I only paid seven pounds for two and a half meters. The shop assistant pointed out that this fabric has a misprint, which is why it's on the discount rail. It's this white line that runs across. I think the graphic print and the gathering of the skirt will hide the misprint. Another thing we shall both find out. I think we have established that I like graphic prints. The next one is the same. I love this orange and pink combination. I also like the retro vibes it's giving. I think this is cotton lawn. It is very soft and drapey. This was also just seven pounds for 2.65 meters. I'm pairing it with this new look 6692 pattern. I like the square neckline of this dress and it has pockets. I have wanted to make this dress for a while now, but the smocking detail on the back scares me, but I'll give it a go. I would say that was a good shopping day. I'll link all the shop details in the description. Top tip, wash your fabrics as soon as you get them. You never know when inspiration will strike. In my next vlog, I'll be sharing my 2024 sewing plans. I'm just finalizing the list, although I have a feeling I'll still be changing that list until I actually film that video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed walking around those fabric shops in central London with me. I also hope that my Deborah pattern review will give you an idea how to work with a Vicky Sews pattern or in general how to make that top. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye for now and happy sewing. Bye!